Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another Neglected Gem. And today's Neglected Gem is Light Sleeper by Paul Schrader from 1992. This is out on Monday by Powerhouse Indicator. I've just got it early. If you pre-order from Indicator you usually get the editions early. Um, this is a film that I had seen fairly recently, I must have seen it in video after it came out and then it was on Movie Drum, I'm sure on BBC Two in the UK and I had kind of, I hadn't seen it for ages and then myself and Nazarin Prod and our joint kind of podcast, YouTube channel um, Ronan Nazarin Talks did a Paul Schrader special which I'll leave a link to in the description below if you want to check that out. So I picked up a cheap DVD copy to rewatch it again um, and it brought back actually how good it is because it is a very good film um, and then when Indicator announced they were releasing it on Blu-ray um, I was really pleased and the edition, I know it's early in 2021, but I think this might be one of the better releases we get of the year. Um, as always with the Indicator Limited Editions, this is by number 188, if you're keeping score at home. As usual, the special editions are reversible art and a booklet, as well to full. And Paul Schrader, 28 years ago, 29 years ago, yeah. um, you get critical response, and you've got essays and pictures as you'd expect. Um, it's a really nice booklet, strangely enough, that's as you expect from Indicator. But the extras on this release are quite wonderful. You get a commentary from Schrader from 2002. And Schrader is one of those guys that you could listen to all day because he is one of those guys that's just honest. Um, and I'll get to kind of the things he discusses in his commentary when I talk about the film. There's a selected scene commentary from Willem Dafoe and Susan Sarandon from 2002. There's a 66, 66 minute Guardian interview with Willem Dafoe from 1998, an audio which is very good, which is informative and um, amusing. You have a 2021 interview with Paul Schrader looking back on Light Sleeper. Um, he's pretty much sitting in the woods somewhere in America. Um, looking a bit older now, so this is actually the interview from this year already. Indicator work really quickly. Um, you have a BEM interview with Ed Lachman, the DP, and Paul Schrader from 2008, which is 31 minutes long. And you have a somewhat experimental and quite annoying film by Mark Cousins, who introduced Light Sleeper on Movie Drome, I believe, when it was on BBC2. Dear Paul Schrader, thank you for Light Sleeper again from 2021 which is 11 minutes long and a bit too long um, Mark Cousins just tries to be arty farty and about it instead of just talking about the film it has to, that's he's just being pedantic it has a trailer um, image gallery and obviously the, the booklet it's a really good release the print is beautiful um, as Paul Schrader said, um, Ed Lachman likes his gels and nice colours and he tried to keep him away from his um, lighting gels as much as possible. Um, but some beautiful blues and greens 
Um, but it's an excellent release by Indicator. Not that I'm biased to anything towards Indicator. Um, so the film itself is a typical Schrader character that he's used before. I don't know whether one of the reasons that it has been kind of neglected and forgotten about was because people maybe think, oh, it's similar to the Taxi Driver story, which Schrader wrote. Um, it's similar to American Gigolo. And Schrader himself kind of imagines this character as being kind of the same character. Somebody who's looking for his way in life, somebody who doesn't really belong, and he's searching for his way in life. You know, Travis Bickle, Tra comes from travelling. Um, Willem Dafoe's drug dealer character in this film is called um, John Latour, as in Tatour. Um, this is coming from Schrader, this isn't me, by the way. Um, so it is this idea of somebody who is lost and trying to find their way through life from being in his 20s and being the angry young man of taxi driver to being a vain 30-something like Richard Gere's Gigolo and American Gigolo to a more kind of seasoned character having a midlife crisis in Light Sleeper. He just so happens to be a drug dealer. Um, Schrader himself said, you know, the films he makes or made, they were for the studio and they were character roles, but then after he came back from Japan, after doing Mishima, he came back and the films that he wanted to make were now really, you had to make them independently. Studio Studios just weren't making those kind of films. Whereas when he started in the late 70s, early 80s, Studios still made bigger films, but they also made smaller character films, whereas by the time the late 80s, early 90s, Studios had pretty much almost stopped doing character films. So, if I was thinking about this character, where to get a story of a man doing a midlife crisis, and he didn't really want to do the stereotypical older man, you know, leaves his wife, finds a young woman, buys a Porsche and all that. And according to Schrader, it came to him in a dream. A drug dealer that he used to know in his um, days when he was took a lot of drugs um, came to him in a dream and then he had the realisation that this is the character I should be writing about. You know, for a character to have a midlife crisis, it just so happens he's a drug dealer. So... The characters that appear in the film, the Defoe character, Susan Sarandon as the actual boss, which again for the early 90s was unusual to actually have a woman in charge of um, the men. Um, Willem Defoe's character, Susan Sarandon's character, um, David Clennon's character, who recognises Palmer from The Thing, um, who's a gay character in this, originally the the female boss, the two guys were gay, but Paul Schrader just made one of them gay for the film. Um, but Dave Glenn is really good as well. So it's based, well those characters are based on real people that Schrader knew or Schrader had access to. And it is about Willem Dafoe's Crisis of Faith, which is kind of spurred on by Susan Sarandon's decision to get out of the business and go into cosmetics. So he's going to be left adrift. Um, he keeps a diary. There's a narration um, similar to Taxi Driver. Um, things happen, which I'm not going to go into too many specifics, you just kind of have to watch the film because you really should because it's fantastic. Um, but there's a. We kind of meet some of his regular clients on various stages of um, being able to function in their normal life while um, taking drugs. Um, I think it's David Spade turns up, it might be his first film role, Sam Rockwell. And one of his earliest roles turns up as a another 
um, drug dealer called Jealous, um, and he kind of starts a subplot with a young kind of upper class woman has been murdered um, in the nearby park, so the police are looking out for drug dealers for information, and that leads to a subplot with a police officer pressuring Defoe for information. Um, so he's becoming more and more kind of under pressure, thinking about the future. He goes to a clairvoyant, um, um, played by Schrader's wife at the time, Mary Beth Hart. Um, he runs into Dana Delaney, who just so happens to be at a hospital, who is his ex-wife who used to be a junkie with him, but has cleaned up her act. Um, again, things happen with her. Again, he sees her as being a way out, and you can get clean, and you can um, go into the recording business and go into the music business. But obviously, this is a Schrader film, so it doesn't work out. Again, I'm not going to go into plot specifics. Um, there's a couple of statues of Beatrice, who obviously was Dante's love interest. So again, you have, you know, using the metaphor of this person searching, looking for a way out, looking for a way out with his ideal woman. Um, the film ends very much like American Gigolo, with a nod to Bresson's pickpocket, which obviously Schrader is quite happy to admit that. Um, it looks great on Blu-ray. The score and songs are by somebody called Michael Bean, who I'm not really that familiar with. Um, but he had a Christian band, um, and he wrote songs and lyrics that again echo what's going on on the screen. Schrader wanted that as a kind of third voice. Originally Schrader wanted five to use five Bob Dylan songs and actually had integrated some of the lyrics into the dialogue but when he contacted Bob Dylan Bob Dylan didn't want him to use those songs but Bob Dylan suggested he could use five other songs that Schrader felt had really nothing to do with the film and were completely um, inappropriate so he ended up excuse me he ended up going um, to use Michael Bean not the actor. Um, so the music, you have the th a voice, um, obviously you have the narration and the foe reading out his diary, which is another voice, and then you have the actual um, action that's going on. Like I said, the commentary is wonderful. There's a slight lag in the commentary because it's the 2002 DVD commentary, so he's a little bit behind the actual image but it's not really a huge problem but it's a fascinating commentary like all of Schrader's are like I said at the start he's a very honest filmmaker sometimes that helps him sometimes that hinders him but it's really interesting because he talks about when you're doing a film that's all about character and not so much about plot you kind of sometimes lose interest in the plot so when you need a plot device as in later in the film to kind of push things towards the climax you sometimes go and make decisions that you perhaps could have thought of something better if you actually were invested in the plot because again this is a character study the same way American Gigolo is a character study the same way Taxi Driver is a character study say me first reformed as a character study, you know, Schrader's not really interested in doing action extravaganzas. Um it doesn't have a problem just doing dialogue scene after dialogue scene after dialogue scene, which never gets dull with Schrader films generally. Um but it's just that interesting argument about if you're so focused on doing a character piece but you do need a plot point, one to keep the audience not from falling asleep and two, to drive the film towards a climax. You know, he mentions a certain critic who is critical, strangely enough, of a specific 
plot development near the end of the film and how that is resolved in a kind of standard way that we've seen before. And again, Schrader kind of says, well, that criticism stung because he knew he was probably right. And if he'd actually thought about it a bit more, and again, wasn't so focused on the character side and paid a little bit more attention to the plot and how he can resolve the plot, he might have made different decisions. And I think that's just very interesting and very honest. Because again, a lot of less interesting directors, when you listen to their commentaries, they don't, you know, everything they do is great and everything they do is wonderful. Um, whereas the most interesting director commentaries are the ones where they explain their decisions and they say, well, maybe I could have did it better or I could have did this. Um, so it's just a wonderful commentary. And again, he's really honest about his decisions, which is refreshing. Um, it's just a beautiful little film. And again, I think it was neglected and forgotten about. One, because of the subject matter. You know, nobody really wants to see a redemptive story about a drug dealer. Um, and because the themes are shader themes that you could say, well, it's just a repeat of American Gigolo and it's a repeat of Taxi Driver. But in actual fact, out of those three films, I think I actually prefer Light Sleeper. Um, Defoe is wonderful as ever. Again, as Schrader notes, you know, he doesn't use Defoe in his films particularly as um, Defoe's darker side. He tends to use the phone in a much kind of more humane, more kind of lighter side, and he's more vulnerable. And the thing is, because of Schrader's writing, and because of Willem Dafoe's performance, you do actually care about him, you do want him to get out, you do want his life to get better and get sorted, but obviously you know um, it's probably not going to happen. There's a really nice cool fatalism to the film. You kind of know he's not going to make it, spoiler alert. Um, but again, at the end of the film, like Bresson's pickpocket, there's perhaps a chance for some hope eventually, um, which I suppose is all we can hope for. So thanks very much for watching. Another neglected gem. I mean, if you're a fan of Schrader, this purchase, the upgrade to the Indicator Blu-ray is essential. If you're not, I would still highly recommend it. Um, as an essential early 90s American film. Um, it's just wonderful. And the extras on it are just wonderful. Again, Indicator. Again, I don't get paid by Indicator, if honest. Um, but indicators usually knocks out of the park with the extras and they really um, go the extra mile for things. Again, there's a 2021 interview with Paul Schrader um, and Mark Cousins, interesting little 11 minute things from this year as well. So please let me know in the comments below whether you've seen Light Sleeper, what you think of it, and hopefully you'll join me again for another neglected gem. I do think all the neglected gems I've done so far are all from the 90s. I don't know whether that's just coincidence. Um, yes, thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films. Thank you very well.